Welcome to Real People, Real Matters. This is Diana Tolchinsky with my first guest, Gina Speckman. Gina, please tell me where you grew up in the area. I grew up in Southfield, Michigan, and I lived there until I went to college at 17. So I still consider myself a Detroiter, but I've lived in the Chicago area way longer than I lived in Detroit. <laughs> wow, please tell me about uh, your high school. Like, um, were you college bound or were you junior college or? Um, well, I went to a very competitive high school. It was a public high school, but um, I would say 95% of the kids went to four-year colleges from my high school. So it's interesting that different alternatives of schools weren't even discussed with us. Oh. Um, so I went to University of Michigan. It was my in -state, one of my in-state schools. It happens to be a good school, so I was lucky it's, that it was available to me there and affordable. Um, and most of my friends went to that school in Michigan State University. So nowadays kids ha have lots of options and lots of different kinds of degrees, but not so much back in my day. Oh. Um, please tell me about your parents. Like, were they encouraging you to go to school or they wanted you to go out of state? Well, my parents very much um, encouraged me to go to school. They didn't even finish high school. Um, they, they were from Europe. They were Holocaust survivors. Oh, wow. And so um, for them, education was very important. So there was never really a question about going to college for me. Um, it was something that they didn't have an opportunity to, to do, and I wanted to, so it wasn't you know that much mm -hmm. of a push for me. And um, I liked school. I, you like to write or um, I was speaking? more, um, I like to write, but um, math and science were really my favorites. Oh, nice, nice. And you have a brother also in Michigan? Yes, he's a lawyer. He stayed in the Detroit area, and I still have really good friends that live there. My parents aren't alive anymore, but oh, I go sorry. back. And um, please tell me about University of Michigan. Like, how did you like the school? I loved it. And it's so funny looking back now because um, Ann Arbor was only 40 minutes away from my home. But we felt we were in another universe. We oh, were nice. in our school universe. We didn't have cars, so we didn't go home. And um, even though it was so close, and it's funny to think about it now, um, how close we were to home, we were away at school. Oh, okay. And um, I loved Ann Arbor. What was your major back then? Um, I majored in economics. And did you want to come out with a bachelor's and do something with finance? No. no. Um, and it's funny because after that, I worked for a year, and then I went to, b got my MBA. Mm -hmm. So, but I really was more in the marketing I took more marketing classes, and I majored in marketing and management when I got my MBA. Oh, nice, nice. Um, and then when did you move to the Chicagoland area? Well, um, after I finished college, I worked in Washington, D.C. for a year, and then I went to grad school at New York University and got my MBA, and I lived in New York for three years, and then I moved here. Um, a lot of people I grew up with moved to Chicago because it was the nearest big city, um, Detroit at the time, and this yes. is like we have mid '80s. Yes. Was not a place that had a lot of opportunities for people, unfortunately. So I'm really lucky in a way because a lot of my childhood friends live in Chicago too. A lot of us came here. And I was just wondering, um, how did you find the suburbs of Chicago um, different from Detroit or different from New York? Well, um, in New York, I lived in the city, so I didn't really spend any time in the suburbs. And I didn't move into the suburbs of Chicago until I was 41. <laughs> so I was a city person here for most of my time. And then when I had kids and they were starting to go to school, we moved to the suburbs. Oh, nice. And how did you um, like the school system um, with your kids, different from your background? Well, it's funny um, that my husband, who grew up in Evanston, um, we kind of replicated our childhoods. So we wanted our kids to go to school with kids that were in the neighborhood. We wanted them to go to elementary school and then junior high and high school with the same group of kids. Um, 
And so we wanted that, that you could ride your bike to places. Oh, and yeah, um, safety. And just, yeah, and then, you know, that your friends weren't 20 miles away, that you could um, hang out with your friends in the summer or weekends, and that, you know, how we grew up. So oh, nice. um, we really like the suburbs. We live in Wilmette. Um, and tell me, what type of job do you have now? Um, I'm executive director of Chicago's North Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau. So I work in the hospitality and tourism industry, which was not something I ever knew about or thought about growing up. But I ended up now doing this for over 30 years, so I must like it. Wow, wow. Like compared to like um, your MBA in New York and now. And right. I use my education, but again, I didn't know that convention and visitors bureaus even existed. Um, please tell me, what does the convention tourism area um, do for the Chicago land area? Well, I started my career at CHU Chicago, which is the city's Convention and Visitors Bureau. And at the time, I had just moved to Chicago, and I didn't even know where Michigan Avenue was. Wow. So I thought, oh, this will be a fun place to work, and I'll get to know Chicago. And then I'll move on after two or yes. three years. Yeah. Well, I ended up staying there 17 years. Wow. So. Um, it's just, you know, it's a really fun industry because not only is it interesting travel, tourism, meetings, um, it's important for the economies of the cities. So you really feel like you're making an impact. Like in Chicago and even on the North Shore, um, people staying in hotels, people coming from out of town and spending money at restaurants and at stores and attractions. It's really good for the economies of the cities we represent. So there's a major business component to it, too. It's not just all fun and games. There's a lot of money surrounding tourism and meetings and travel. And tell me, how many people are in your staff? There's seven of us. Um, and we started out much smaller, but now um, there's seven people in our office. and. We may, we're basically a sales and marketing organization, so the salespeople all have different markets that they sell to to bring mm -hmm. business to the North Shore. And then we do marketing, which is um, producing publications, our website, social media presence, writing blogs, doing digital advertising campaigns. Um, that's what we do. We sell and market the area. What was your original... Um um, job title compared to now the executive director? Like well, I've been executive director of the North Shore Bureau for 15 years, and when I was in at, Sh at CHU Chicago, I was senior director of marketing and communications. So my background was really the marketing end of things. And blogging and social media. Well, that didn't exist back then. No, no. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I always laugh when I talk about it. When, when I started, um, we still when we, we got a fax machine and we were all excited. This wow. shows how old I am, people, okay? Um, and you could smoke at your desk. I didn't smoke, but wow. I have pictures of colleagues with ashtrays on next to their computers. So things have evolved, you know. We, you know, I produced the first website for the Chicago, you know, Bureau. Um, and now, you know, everything's done digitally and mobile and social. But right. um, it's been interesting to evolve with it and learn with it as it's happened over my career. Gina, please tell me how technology um, made your career or the improvement of technology, I should say. Well, technology has completely changed what we do. Um, in the early days when a meeting planner wanted to come to the area and they knew nothing about it because they could be from Omaha, Washington, D.C., they didn't know the area, we had to talk to them about it. They'd have to come here in person. We'd have to take them to see the places, which we still do, but they were completely dependent on us for the information they got about the area. Well, with the advent of the Internet, they can go online and look at everything themselves. So, um, but what they see online is really like two-dimensional, and it's the hotel or the restaurants, you know, what they want to put out there. What we bring into the mix is the expertise of, you know, what's, what's easier to work with, what's nearby, what the transportation situation is, um, and how we, working with the hotels and restaurants on a daily basis, can help them plan better, get better deals. 
So um, we position ourselves and uh, as the destination experts, but the way that clients can access and do things online have given them opportunity to find out a lot more information on their own before we get involved with them. How were the earlier days like? Well, in the earlier days, like I was saying um, before, we you know had a fax machine that we would get proposals for. We'd have to messenger things oh, wow, to messenger. clients, or you know send it through the mail. I mean, now um, we would get a request for proposal, and they knew they would get an answer in a week or two. Now they want an answer in 24 hours because they know that they could email you a proposal and that you could get it back to them right away. Everything was done with mail and then faxing. Um, contracts were done, you know, through messengering or overnight mail. Um, and it was just very different. People would make deals at bars having martinis. Oh, yes. Like it was the old, the old madman sales kind of yeah. pitch. And now everyone's a lot more savvy. Everyone has access to more information. Right. And people are more health conscious and they're not having five martinis at noon anymore. So it's a different day. Yes. And tell me, um, when you originally started, do you have any advice for parents that want um, to go into social media or communications? Do you have any advice that you can give them? When do they usually start um, you know, talking about college and university? Well, it's hard. My son's a junior and he's in the thick of it now. I always tell kids, and we have interns all the time, especially in the summer, is if you're interested in something, go and be an intern. Offer to be an intern even if you're not paid. Even if you have to go work at the pool for a couple days a week and then, you know, intern for free, get yourself into anything that you're interested in and see really what the day-to-day -day work is that is involved in it and if you like it. Um, and then every time I've interns, and I've had hundreds probably over the years, I always say to them, I don't know if I'm going to have a job for you when you graduate or when you need a job, but my advice to you on this internship or any internship is make it so that I can't live without you. So that's what I did in my career. Um, I interned and like worked really hard and made it so they couldn't live without me. And I was just wondering, um, please tell me about Restaurant Month. Well, Restaurant Month is just one of the promotions we do every year to um, get people to leave their houses, spend money, come to the North Shore, um, visit old favorite restaurants or try something that's brand new that just opened. Um, we do a restaurant month, not a restaurant mm -hmm. week, because all of February is pretty cold and the restaurants could use the business all the whole month, not yes. just one week. Um, but we've done museum month and um, theater week. In the summer, we promote a ton of festivals that go on and we um, try to promote them beyond the boundaries of the villages that they take place in. So um, we work really closely, for example, with the Glenview Chamber, oh, nice. and they do a lot of great events they, um, throughout the year. So they do their Bites and Brews, they have their um, Summer Fest in June, um, they're going to be doing some new events um, coming up this year. And so what we do with the villages that we work with is they produce these events and they do an excellent job in promoting it to the village and the citizens in yes. the village. But our job is to use our budget to get new people to come to oh, Glenview nice. and experience these great events that are taking place here. So we're kind of like the add-on and um, the advertising and social media. Our team is large and we have a budget to promote these things, which the individual chambers don't. So we really take what they do and amplify it to boost their attendance and get new people to come to them. Um, how is like the state of Illinois compared to the state of Michigan drawing the people in? Um... Well, that's a really interesting question now because um, Illinois has always had a very robust tourism program, and luckily it still does. Um, we've always been supported, and our funding has never been disrupted. This year, the state of Michigan's funding has been completely cut. 
Wow. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this summer. Hopefully that's temporary. That's not I a good it, thing yes. for the industries yeah. to have any any one state um, not cut. But we, you know, Michigan is a big draw for us because we draw a lot of people to the Chicagoland area that live in Michigan. It's one of our number one um, draws and areas that yes. we draw from. And then a lot of people like to vacation in Michigan that live in Illinois. So our job, though, um, we work very closely with the state, is to you know keep the money in Illinois and to bring people from Michigan and Wisconsin and Iowa and Indiana and our surrounding states. That's our biggest draw is to get them to come here. Um, we have a conference every March, the Illinois Governor's Conference on Tourism, and we all meet and talk and learn best practices and cross-promote each of our areas. I mean, how difficult it is to promote Glemia. I know we had several restaurants, but how difficult is it to prom promote in, during the summertime? I understand like Kalamazoo and then like all these like Michigan like areas. How difficult is it to compete with uh, those states for Illinois? Well, it depends. I mean, we have certain, you know, Chicago is one of the largest cities in the United States. So there's for people that want to see Broadway shows or mm -hmm. to you know, experience, you know, shopping like you would in New York City or London, Chicago is it for the Midwest. Yes. So Michigan doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So we really try to promote the assets we have. We have Northwestern University in our area. You'd be surprised how many Glenview hotels are filled all the time with Northwestern related Wild, yes, events. Yes. So that's the benefit of having a regional bureau. So we represent Glenview, but we also represent seven other North Shore communities. And something doesn't have to be happening in Glenview to bring people to Glenview. And I think that's the great benefit of what we do, is people don't realize that, that people stay here um, for purposes that are happening outside of mm -hmm. the city. We have people that stay on the North Shore that are going to Cubs games, that are going oh, to run nice. the Chicago Marathon, that are going to Lollapalooza, that are going to golf tournaments or Six Flags in Lake County. So we, through targeted digital advertising, take any major thing that is bringing people to the area and try to have them stay in Glenview and the North Shore. Do you have a favorite um, month or to promote like any business or anything You know, like we that. don't have an off month because a lot of what we do now, like I'm right now finalizing all my spring, early summer advertising. Mm -hmm. So we're always working on a timeline that's way in advance. For, for the year. Yes. So people might say, oh, January's slow. Well, January's not slow for our office because we're going to a lot of industry trade shows and we're having to place all our advertising and put together our all calendars of what's happening in May, June, and July. So we don't really have any slower or off times mm -hmm. in that sense. So, and it depends, you know, I mean, what month is the best? You know, some people are winter people, some yes. people are yes. um, like summer events. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because in the summer there's so much going on because, you know, we, do, we have two seasons, winter and summer, but um, that it's hard to compete sometimes with events because there's a lot going on, whereas in the winter, an event gets more attention because there's not as much going on. Do you have any advice for um, high schoolers? Or um, I understand you brought up that internship. How um, is important is communications and public speaking um, to your job position or to any job position in the convention area? Well, it's you know I would say in general that um, I'm always surprised that young adults don't have great writing skills. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the onset of like video and other forms of communication have made people um, need less and less written communication skills, but I think they're so important. Um, so I would encourage people, you need to write and present yourself in writing probably more than you do public speaking oh, just yes. on a day-to-day -day basis, that they should take th um, those skills more seriously. Um, do you have you heard of blogging, or um, how do you feel about certain people love blogging, or or people like flame it like on the internet and say, I well, don't want to be there. Well, it's funny. We have we have um, an active blog on our website, and I you know now I'm looking at it a little differently now. Um, 
our blogs are now also becoming our digital content huh. um, because you know the days of just having a display ad are being replaced by contents and stories that you know for example um, the 10 ble best places to get a hamburger on the North Shore like you see that online all the time like these best of lists and you know or you know where to get a spa vacation it locally like people read that and respond to it and it looks more like it's just an article or editorial mm -hmm. well that's really advertising so a lot of our blogs are turning into content What's the difference between content and advertising? Um, well, you know when somebody creates an ad and it's a piece of artwork mm -hmm. and then you see it as like a banner on a website? Yes. Um, that's one way to advertise, but another way is to literally have like what looks like an article yes. that features, like I was saying, t 10 best places, you know, to have a pizza or, you know, most Instagrammable spots on the North Shore. That we also do a lot of what we it's called content advertising, oh. where we're placing articles that have that match the interests of people that go to certain websites that the advertisement is placed on, but it's more editorial looking. Yes. And that is, I think, the shift of how digital advertising is going. And so we do a lot of that. Do you have anyone that screens like the honesty and dishonesty? of like those Yelp reviewers or anything like that, or how honest bloggers can be? No, it's interesting though, we work very closely with Yelp. Um, shout out to Angela who covers the North Shore and does a great job. Um, the thing about Yelp and TripAdvisor and all these review-based sites is that it's people's honest opinions and they mm -hmm. get to say what they want. Um, we do seminars for our hotel and restaurant and attraction members telling them how to respond to comments. Um, so I think it's important to never be negative, you know, to never, you know, if someone yells at you, you don't yell yes. back, you appreciate the comment and either fix something that legitimately went wrong or try to reframe it as to why it happened. Like, you know, we, we, we go through that. Um, oh, you good. can't erase negative comments. You it's can't part know. of why you know it, gi it gives the consumer power but if their complaint is illegitimate yes. you as the business owner can respond also and we work very closely with our members to have them write positive responses that will ultimately help them you know better themselves and get more business and I was wondering, how do you like the village of Glenview um, Chamber of Commerce? I understand the Glen was built up uh, so many years ago, and so, so much shopping goes there. How do you like the area compared to your um, area in Detroit? Oh, you know what? Um, it's very similar. You know, it's interesting in Detroit, the suburbs are built up a little more than they are mm -hmm. in Chicago, only because you didn't have a major city to go to. So a lot of things that are in downtown Chicago didn't exist in downtown Detroit, so the suburbs had to have them. Like now things have changed and Detroit's evolving finally after 40 years, but um, you know, the baseball stadium, the football stadium, everything was in the suburbs, you know, for my, for a long time. Yes. Um, so that's the difference a little bit. Um, but the suburbs, in general are the same, you know, in terms of having great schools, having a lot to do. Um, it's really beautiful here because we have a lake nearby. Yes. Um, the public transportation here is a lot better so you can access the city and people in the city can access our area. I'm, I'm happy because Detroit I just remember they had like so many years of depression. And oh, recession. like 40 or 50 years, pretty much my whole life it yes. was that way. So it's, it is nice that it's turning around. And I was just wondering, um, do you have any like plans for the future uh, to expand the office or? Oh, uh, we're always, we're always, you know, a lot of what we do is very creative. So we're always thinking of new ideas and ways to engage visitors and to get people to come here. Um, we have expanded, our budgets increased, so we're always looking forward to what we can do. We go to conferences and see what different areas around the country are doing that are innovative and creative and adapt them here. So there's a lot of creativity in our jobs at bureaus that make it exciting and, you know, we're always having to think ahead. 
And how are the school systems like in Columbia compared to uh, private academies and everything else that you had in Detroit? Um, well, you know, I don't know. I there w mostly everyone I knew went to public schools. I think just like here, the public schools are great. We had great public schools too. So I don't really know that much about the private school side because we're so fortunate to have such amazing public schools. Thank you, Gina Speckman, for this interesting conversation about your life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching Real People, Real Matters. This is Diana Solchinsky with my guest, Gina Speckman.